Australia is on fire. Really sad situation in the outback. There's been about 180 people that have been suspected of committing these fires. While you're at the Golden Globes and these show actors are saying it was just climate change. I think what is happening is that you're having some farmers, they want to clear some land. They got in their head that they have to burn everything to get nutrients in the soil. It's just like a quick way to clear land. Sometimes these fires get out of control. Uh, you do have some hot temperatures over there. So a lot of times when you have these controlled burns, they get out of control very easily. And especially in Australia because a lot of the trees in Australia have these oils that can catch on fire. So I, that's another reason why I think Australia is really been burning more than people have ever seen before is because you set off a large powder keg of these eucalypts trees and the oils in them are combustible and then you're just pretty much starting off a chain reaction. So I think controlled burning should be outlawed because it's very easy for these things to get out of control, especially in arid landscapes. And it really doesn't make sense for doing controlled burning because you lose a lot of the nutrients when you just burn everything. Most of it goes up in smoke. So you're only getting about 10% of the carbon. What would be a better practice would be to bury, bury your clearings, bury your weeds, bury the wood in the ground. And that way the ground will be able to retain a lot of moisture, humus, and become better over time it might take a little bit longer of a process but you're actually making the land more fertile that way and you're putting more moisture back into the soil so hugo culture is the way to go but there's been a lot of weird things going on it's suspected that there's been some chemtrailing in the area and i've actually heard this before where they believe they were suspecting the chinese were doing chemtrailing around the area to pull the clouds out of the area to get less water. This is actually suspected even in Iran. How they can control the weather, how they can move the clouds to where they want them to go. It's a possibility. I'm not ruling it out. I think it could be used for a lot of nefarious reasons. Many Australians, they don't depend on their government for help. They're very self-sufficient. You have a lot of Australians who live off the land. They grow their own food. And so when you do something like this, when you burn down most of the land, you're actually trying to take the dependence away from the people and you're making them dependent on the governments, on food from the outside. So when you think about it, now Australia is going to have to import a lot of their food until they can get back on their feet because a lot of these areas have burned down. So you're taking a people that were self-sufficient and putting them in a position where they have to accept outside resources and pay for those. Wondering now what's going to happen with the trade, how that's going to be affected. It's really going to hurt Australia's exporting. You've pretty much made Australia a dependent country now on China. Some people think this is an Agenda 2020 event. Australia is on fire. It's burning. It's pretty bad. And it's going to be very hard to get that land to come back to its prior condition because you reach a point where all that water is gone from the soil, the moisture, and you kind of need trees in order to make water. So if all those trees are burned down, gone, it's going to be hard to replicate that. And this was actually happened in the big dust bowl of the United States that it was once very good land to have. And then they got into the habit of killing the gopher, or the groundhogs. Did you know that groundhogs are responsible for a lot of the rain? Well, it turns out when they make their, their underground little bunkers, that what happens is, is that the air goes through and it creates these negative ions and it actually helps generate rain. So when they started killing all these groundhogs and gophers, they started realizing, oh crap, the rain is gone. 
But you're going to have to get those little critters back, create environments for them. I think you could look to the old minds, the old ways to bring back this country to its prior greatness. Look to the man of Bill Mollison, permaculture designist. And there's ways, there's, there's certain trees that they could bring back that will bring back the rain. Like the banyan tree. There is this man in India that they had lost tens of thousands of acres, this place. And what he did is every day he would plant banyan trees. And the banyan trees hold large amounts of water in their trunk. And eventually it became a jungle again. Just one man, he turned thousands of acres back into a jungle. I think Australia needs to look into what kind of trees they're going to plant. They probably want to stay away from a lot of the eucalypts, so they need to really look for fireproofing trees. And they're going to have to replant these areas. Now, it is suspected that some of these people were deliberately also setting fires of arson, not just to clear their own land, but to they were setting fire to other people's land. And it is suspected that they were doing this to sell the land to maybe foreign company. They were saying the Chinese could possibly be involved here as far as creating conditions where they could come in, swoop in, and buy a lot of property. It's going to be a reshaping of Australia.